independent efforts, like the National Council for a New America. Its Geo Pizza Party took place in Virginia this weekend. That event pointedly did not include the chairman of the party, Michael Steele, who apparently was not invited. The Geo Pizza Party folks have had a yes no, yes no relationship with the party's last vice presidential nominee, Sarah Palin. The latest news is that she will now be involved with the group. But one of the promoters of Palinism in the Republican Party, talk show host Rush Limbaugh, is against the whole Geo Pizza Party rebranding idea. Look, folks, it, 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 it's uh, this simple. We do not need a listening tour. We need a teaching tour. That is what the Republican Party or slash the uh, conservative movement needs to focus on. Listening tour ain't it. Teaching tour is more apt. Those 80 percent of Americans who don't identify as Republicans right now, they don't need to be listened to. They need to be talked to. <laughs> what we're seeing right now is a Republican Party that is fragmented and probably still fragmenting and it will probably be that way for a while. This is early days in their rebuilding. But one of the people who is seeing his stature rise in this somewhat chaotic power vacuum is a man who was essentially disowned by his party during this past election cycle. Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas who ran for president this past year. After being excluded from some of the Republican primary debates, Ron Paul held his own Ron Paul convention at the same time as the Republican National Convention, which drew 10,000 supporters in Minneapolis. It was not an adjunct event for the Republican Convention. It was a competing event. The first sign that Congressman Paul might be being brought back into the fold may have been the Republican embrace of the Tax Day Tea Parties last month. Tax Day protests in the theme of a tea party are very much associated with Ron Paul supporters, some of whom were slightly miffed to see their, that message being co-opted by national Republican figures. And now, Dr. Paul himself seems to be getting more attention on the Hill personally and in terms of policy. Consider his recent bill to audit the Federal Reserve. It's called the Federal Reserve Transparency Act of 2009. It now has 124 co-sponsors in Congress and counting. By comparison, the Washington Independent notes today that Dr. Paul's Federal Reserve Board Abolition Act just two years ago attracted a grand total of zero co-sponsors. What a difference political exile makes. Joining us now is the man himself, Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. Dr. Paul, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Nice to be with you. First of all, I should ad admit that my introductory remarks were not the most flattering portrait of your party, so I want to give you a chance to say uh, what you think of the Republican Party's fortunes right now. Do you think this is a rebuilding time? Well, something has to be done if they want to stay in existence. I don't think they can continue to do what they've been doing. Uh, you know, they've sort of uh, didn't accept what I was talking about during the campaign. But, you know, I, I talked about and defended. I never voted for an unbalanced budget, never raised taxes. But, you know, I had this other silly idea that you shouldn't fight wars unless the Congress declared them. And I had all this uh, notion that you shouldn't print money when you need it. And these ideas uh, struck a chord with a lot of people. But so far for uh, not a whole lot in the leadership have come to me and said uh, I'd lead the charge but uh, hopefully some of these ideas will stick because all I know is uh, the campuses uh, are, are very attuned to this and will listen and I can get uh, still a large number of young people out to listen to a different type of Republican Party where they deal with civil liberties and they deal with a foreign policy that used to not be that strange to the Republicans you know where where we had a strong national defense but we didn't go warmongering and uh, that used to be you know always the Democrats that did that but now it looks like both parties endorse these things so if, if you truly want to be interested in civil liberties, protection of civil liberties. If you want a foreign policy built on common sense and not telling people what to do and bombing them if they don't do what we want, and having come up with some common sense and say, we just can't print money when you need it, all of a sudden these things do make a lot of sense whether they're Republican or Democrat. I think there is a revolution going on in ideas, but a true revolution has to uh, be pervasive enough to infiltrate into both uh, political parties. And and I, I'm for very proud that I have about 14, at least, of Democrats who are on that bill dealing with the Federal Reserve. And I think I'm going to get a lot more. 
Dr. Paul, when I, in, in asking you about the Republican Party, you're pointedly using the word they to talk about <laughs> them. And I imagine that's not, um, that's, that's not an accident. Do you think about, uh, you obviously have been a part of the libertarian movement in this country. You've run as a libertarian for public office before. Do you think now about the prospect, the, the, the likelihood that a third party really could be having its moment right now? Something like only 20% of people identify as Republicans. The party does seem to be in chaos. Is this a time for the, either the Libertarian Party or some other party to break off from the Republicans? Well, I, I think politically speaking, in, in terms of the need for one, yes, it exists. But uh, the bias is so much against it. There's no, no, there's no competition. You know, we go and die overseas claiming we're spreading democracy. But, you know, if you come to the conclusion, which I have and many others have in this country, that uh, you elect Republicans to balance the budget and it doesn't happen. You elect Democrats to change foreign policy. It doesn't happen. We only have one party and they write all the rules. So it's very hard to get uh, on the back. Ballots. You spend most of your money trying to get on ballots. And do you think anybody would have noticed me last year if I'd have been running third party? No, I had to do it within a larger structure. And uh, but but even though I use the word they, I have been uh, elected all these times as a Republican, and I was out of the party for one year. But nevertheless, it is very difficult. It's not going to happen unless the laws get changed. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a very good democratic process here in this country because of that. Dr. Paul, I wanted to ask you about one figure specifically who is trying to be part of the Republican rebuilding, rebranding effort uh, right now, and that's um, Newt Gingrich. And he is somebody who has actively worked against you in the past. He supported a challenge to you uh, in your district in Texas. If he makes a bid to replace Michael Steele, or if he even, he even makes a bid uh, to, to run for president, to get, run for the Republican nomination, would you support him? Do, do you two see eye to eye these days? No, not really. His policies are very much opposite of mine. I mean, he he's very much of an internationalist when it comes to foreign policy. He believes in a lot of that. He's never had an interest in in uh, uh, foreign uh, in monetary policy. And I remember early in his career, he took a more sensible approach about you know the allowing medicinal use of marijuana and letting the states make these decisions. But now his attitude is not that way. And these are the kind of issues that young people are interested in, and that's why the Republican Party. Party can't reach the college kids with the current uh, status quo of the of the party. They they need to change their attitude about personal liberties. If they talk about personal freedoms, they have to believe in it, you know. And uh, if they talk about it, uh, you know, not policing the world and no nation building, you just can't get in office and do exactly the opposite. But no, I I knew and I are you know friendly. We talk to each other, and I'd be pleased to debate him on foreign policy or something. But no, he wouldn't be my my candidate for the presidency, it would be more of the same. He's had his chance and, you know, there, there was no Republican revolution from 94 on. There wasn't any after the year 2000. So that is the shame. The Republicans had good rhetoric about limiting government. Nothing happened and that's how they lost their credibility. But now they said, well, we didn't act like Democrats and now so we have to be like Democrats. Democrats get in and they say, well, we got to appease the right wing of the Republican Party. So they start acting like Republicans. So I I would say they ought to live up to their true beliefs. Just believe in freedom and believe in the Constitution. Believe me, this country would be a lot better off if we just dealt with it in as simple fashion as that. Believe in freedom. That's what built this country. We don't, we don't have to decide which country to invade next. I mean, that's, that's preposterous. Or which welfare, new welfare programs that we have to have. But uh, I, I just don't think that either party right now offers a whole lot to the American people who want to see some really serious change. Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas, who more than any other sitting Republican politician right now, has uh, galvanized and inspired uh, a, a real, a, a broad-based movement of young people. Uh, congratulations on your success, sir, and thanks for your time tonight. Thank you very much.